Right, well here's my little Olympus EPL3, very neat little job. It's the it's the black one, but there's a very nice chrome stripe at the top. Makes it look or brushed aluminium, whatever it is, silver strip, but it makes it look much slimmer than it is, especially from the top. But it is a pretty compact uh, compact little job. Well, it won't fit in your pocket, it will without a lens on, but uh, the lens I'm gonna put on here, that's the, uh, the Panasonic F17 20 millimeter, which I had with my previous Panasonic GF2, which is such a good lens, there was no point in buying Olympus lenses really, though I'm sure they're just as good. But the 17s are proven, lovely sharp lens, and, uh, 20 millimeters, 40 millimeter, kind of pleasantly wide angle, come normal, good, good general purpose lens just to carry around in a bag. I usually leave the lens on when it's in the camera, in my pocket, in a bag. And that's my stylish little lens hood. Huh? Even at my age, a slave to fashion. I just think it looks so nice. It's a uh, 46 millimeter. Uh, fits the uh, the Panasonic lens with the cutouts. I don't think it achieves very much in keeping the light off, but even at my old age, I'm a slave to fashion. Sad, isn't it? There's no built-in flash on this camera. Uh, that's You can see it's a disadvantage. I don't use a flash with these much. Anyway, this is a compact little job, so it'll slip in a bag easily. Doesn't have a great deal of power, but it's got enough of the sort of things that I might want to use it for, just occasional indoor shots of friends or family, something like that. But with the 1.7 lens and usable performance up to 1600, the camera 1600 ISO with the cameras, not often much need for a, a flash. This is the uh, new VF3 viewfinder. One of the reasons I bought this little Olympus to replace my GF2 was that this viewfinder is much, much better than the, the Panasonic job. And it's, I don't think it's much more expensive, a couple of 20 quid more maybe. Uh, it's a nice size, I mean, makes the camera a good bit bigger, but, but not too inconvenient. It'll give you a downward view, 90 degree view if you want which is less valuable than it would seem because you've got the screen on the back that'll swivel, so that's not really necessary. Good diopter adjustment on the size, on the side, and also it's viewable very easily through for, for people who wear glasses, which I do, and it adjusts back to that very easy. But I really like an eye-level finder, so I use this a lot of the time with this finder on. It gives an 800 by 600, I believe, view in the viewfinder, about life size about one to one and it's a very effective little finder I wouldn't want to try and focus in it stuff like that but in general it's uh, perfectly usable works well at night too because of course unlike an optical finder the uh, if it's dark it's uh, amplified the light is amplified through it or brighter than it would normally be so pop that back in the cover back in Right, now, here's the rear screen, which is very, very useful. This is one of the two reasons I bought this and sold the Panasonic. One was for this screen, the other was for the better, was for the better viewfinder. But this, this screen's very, very useful. It just pulls out and then give you 45 degrees if you're looking from below and 90 degrees looking from the top. That really is so useful, you find that so handy. So many shots you want to do to have that, uh, that viewpoint difference. Be able to see it conveniently from any angle. It's extremely useful. It only swivels in the one plane, as you can see, so it, it doesn't help you when you're doing portrait shots or anything like that. It helps you a bit, maybe. I've heard people talking about wanting a grip on the front of the camera, but for myself, I, there's a, a small grip on the thumb grip on the back and I find it's very very comfortable to hold but I've got fairly small hands so there she is now let's just pop on the Panasonic 14 millimeter which is 28 millimeter and 35 this is a very very compact little job not quite as Cuttingly sharp, as bitingly sharp as the uh, the one seven, the twenty millimeter one seven Panasonic is, but nonetheless perfectly good lens and with a nice angle of view. The lens hood goes on this too and doesn't big net at all. 
with this, with the 28 mil, with the 14 millimeter lens on, uh, in many ways, the, the camera is. If you wear a coat, jacket is perfectly pocketable. Again, a bit less so when you put the the eye level finder on it, but you can carry that in separately anyway, quite easily, and slip it on if you really want it. But it makes a lovely angle of view. This I also find the 28 of the 14 millimeter very handy for. I like to do a lot of shots, movies on my bicycle, and it does that very well. Good angle of view. This is the 14 to 140 Panasonic zoom, which dwarfs the camera a bit. This is a very very nice lens indeed. I use this for a lot of movie. A lot of movie stuff. I do movies of uh, bands at a blues club I go to, and this this lens is just great for that. And it's got the stabilizer built in, so you need to turn it off on the camera. But the stabler on this lens, stabilizer on this lens, is really really good. And uh, handheld move, handheld movies in dim light and stuff, no problem. It's excellent. It feels nice too, and especially I'll, I think. Again, it feels pretty well balanced. The only downside of this lens to me is the tromboning when it comes when you zoom it. But I mean, that's inevitable, really. With there she is with the eye level finder. With the eye level finder, this makes a very, very nice, balanced, well balanced little combination. Good sharp lens too, with a 28 to 280 millimeter point of view angles uh, on 35 millimeter. Okay, and here's a downside. Now, this is the 16:9 screen. Uh, fills the screen space nicely. As you can see, but here's the 4.3 screen coming up, and that doesn't fill the space so well. In fact, it's very small compared with the Panasonic. That could have been better done somehow, I think. Here's the 3.2, here's the 6x6 six six square, here's the screen with the information either side, which is the 16.9 screen filled in with the information box, which I suppose is a fairly good use of it in the end. The other thing I've mentioned is it's got a very good uh, anti-shake mechanism built into the camera body, which Panasonic's don't. Even with the high-speed lenses, that's useful. It extends what you can do. Oh yes, and also in high-speed mode, shooting high frame rates, the image freezes as it goes along, which means you can't really see what you're doing. That's not ideal. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little run-through on the Olympus EPL3, and uh, that you'll take a look at my other videos on the site. Thanks for looking. Bye now.